All right. Looks like the camera kind of cut out there. I think it hit the four gigabyte maximum file size there. Sorry about that. Have to take everything apart just in order to get to the least important stuff or also the most important part, the part that you should actually be cleaning the most often, which is the heatsink fan and radiator portion of it. Most companies used to do it the way that Dell did. A lot of them have switched. Now, in order to do this, First, unplug the fan, then the screws are connected to the heatsink. You don't have to worry about them coming off. Unscrew from the GPU side. If you have one with a dedicated GPU, it will have Two sections, one with the GPU side, one with the CPU side. The CPU side is usually quite obvious because it will have four connectors and they will be on some sort of spring loaded and they will have the primary cooling system. Just pull it off. I'm not going to show you how to clean this all off because I'm just going to do a quick cleaning and reapplication in order to make sure that this actually cools later. I'll show you the detailed specifics on the Lenovo. But for this one, you'll notice something significantly different looking about this. Than you would on a normal one. And that is that I have this extra metal plate. This is a chunk of aluminum that has been cleaned and uh, ground to a nice flat and smooth surface because these used to have thermal pads which very, 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 very low grade thermal conductors. A large glob of thermal paste will beat out the absolute best thermal pad. Thermal pads can also be burned at much lower temperatures than thermal grease. So, Going to do is just do a quick cleaning for this, which is to rub off as little as there. And this is what I recommend for grease that doesn't dry out. If you're having to disassemble and reassemble, all you do is you rub it. Don't get into the detailed cleaning with the Alcohol, just rub it off somewhat. Have to be significantly done. You have a little bit of grease left over. You want to get it most of the way clean. So, like this, you can still see some streaks of it, but vast majority of it is gone and it's not going to affect much adding that little bit there and for those of you who are saying oh no you got extras doing all this and that and the other thing well I'm not worried about being absolutely precise and doing everything exactly the way that you should because the exact way that I should will affect the temperatures of these chips on this board a whopping 
one tenth of a degree. That is practically nothing, even in computer terms. The difference in lifespan is negligible, hours at most. No difference, if any at all. Now, you might also see that I'm getting dirty fingers and a little bit of thermal paste on them. That's perfectly normal. Don't worry about it. It washes off with a little bit of soap. This. I don't know how well you can see it, but it's about the size of a short grain of rice. That's about all you need per chip. No matter which chip it is, whether it's the CPU or the GPU, about the size that you want. And there are multiple different ways of applying it. I'm also going to put thermal paste here on these dedicated video RAM chips because they fall under the heat sink. Heat sink is actually designed to be able to have them on there, even though they didn't have the thermal pads put on there. That's also another common practice, that they'll have areas for the cooling, but they won't actually use them. It's just a bad uh, technical standpoint practice. When you line up, Try to not turn it too much. Gently press it down. Turn down the screws. Go opposite corners first. And actually, with this one, it says one, two, three, four. And you're supposed to do them in order. I'm doing them three, four, one, two it really doesn't matter which one you do first as long as you do cross and then cross. With these, when it's only got the two, it doesn't matter. I'm going to go from the outside then to the inside just simply because it tends to have a smoother transition for the thermal paste. I have no, had a noticeable difference of two degrees. All right, and that's how you do the thermal paste on this one. Not very in depth, in detail, but that's for this one. I'm not going to show you reassembly because it's basically disassembly in reverse. However, I will show you the Lenovo disassembly and reassembly. This is the Lenovo. It's a nice big laptop, 17 inch. And here's its disassembly. One, two, three, four, And I forgot to mention, you take out the battery again. All right. Once you've got, so don't have it all the way out. But make sure they're all the way out. That's what I forgot. One, two, three, four, five, six. Panel. And you've got access to your heat sink and cooler right there. Pull this. The fan. That's all you need is that. 
And they had this taped to the heatsink for the GPU. I don't bother reattaching that. Some might, I don't. This one has three. And when you reattach it, you do want to use the numbers for one, two, three. This one is for the GPU. When you take these off, you also want to follow the correct order, just in case. These, the screws, are not attached to the heatsink. Okay. Also, the heatsink is attached over here at the fan, except that's just the fan. You don't actually have to take that off to take the heatsink off. Because this one is one of the rare few where the heatsink is not attached to the fan. Okay. So, I don't actually have to take those off. And the two for the GPU side. This particular screw is why I got this. Because it doesn't like to come out. It likes to fall in and roll around. Okay. And then it's just a matter of putting that up. Now, I find it easier to get it out Without the fan in the way, so we take that out and this out. And this one. Get all three. get your fan out. And these are actually remarkably cheap to replace and repair for the fans themselves. This, get this out. Pull it up. And that's how you get at it. Clean out the grill work. I actually have to do that with this one. And you've got access to your CPU and your GPU. Now, here's the fun part. Here's where you get to use the alcohol or the isopropyl alcohol, whichever you get. Take one of these, start off, section as much off as you can to dry. Try not to put any chunks behind. You've got thermal grease on there already. Default from factory. That's good. However, that's still not as good as aftermarket. Unless you got one of the ones that are really expensive and come with whichever type of aftermarket paste you're wanting. Those are expensive though. And if you got one of those, you're likely not going to need a tutorial on how to clean and do this yourself. Now, I have previously done all this on this board, so I have other grease that's on there. With this one, because of the grease that I used, it's non-electrically conductive, so if it gets on stuff, it doesn't matter. It won't hurt anything. However, you do still want to get as much of it off as possible. This is not coming out easily. 
I'm going to go back to toolkit and grab out the brush. Because it's all chunks that aren't coming out. Now normally it's good to just clean out your system as well, anyways. But I don't recommend cleaning it while you've got exposed tip sets where you're gonna put thermal grease because you can get dust in there and that degrades thermal performance significantly. Okay, now I've gotten it off as far as I can with a dry rub. Okay. That's where the rubbing alcohol comes in. Take one of these, portion of one, hold it up nice and tight. Bit of alcohol here. It's just slightly soaking through. Here. And if you just clean up a little bit, shouldn't take much. Get all areas where you're supposed to have the thermal. Grease on it. And the reason for the alcohol is it will dissolve the oil in thermal paste, thermal grease, whatever you want to call it, and allow you to get up far more of it than you would dry. And then a gentle blow on it will cause it to dry up completely. Yeah. That's the benefit of the alcohol, is that it dries up completely and very easily. You also want to do the exact same with the sink itself. That's clean and dry. Not to get much on your fingers. I personally recommend doing it away from the laptop, but because of everything on the table at the same time, I don't have the space to. There's the dry run, and the rubbing alcohol run. Make sure to get these copper contact areas as clean as possible. Those are your main heat sink areas. This is that conduct the heat the best. All right, when you go back, and this one, it doesn't have a spacer. I like this CPU, a long grain of rice equivalent. And the GPU, a little bit shorter than a short grain. And on the RAM chips, I like a decent glob. Make sure that they get as much contact area as possible heat sink, considering you don't have much contact area with the heat sink. And believe it or not, RAM temperatures do make a huge difference in performance. Because they will slow down your performance significantly because they have heat sensors as well. Heat sensors in them help slow down. And once the RAM slows, then your GPU slows, and your gaming performance and whatnot all slows down as well. I'm having an issue because it's clogging up on the 
tip for this because particular chips don't like it have the thermal paste adhere to them. That's a common issue with certain chips. Don't worry about it. that happens. And your tip. Make sure that the cap will go back on. Immediately cap it. Don't want it to get dried out and clog the tip or anything. Right. That's regardless of which you're going to use. Now, the no dry out does not mean that the paste will not dry. It means that even when it does dry, it retains full heat conductivity. Conductivity. Like I said before, just press it down. Seated properly. If it wiggles to the side in order to get it to seat, that's perfectly fine. There's no issue with that with this particular board. Uh, most boards are the same way. If you have to shift them a little bit, that's usually not an issue. Okay. Start with the GPU rather than the CPU on this because that's what. Want to do. It actually also has four and five. So it says one, two, three, four, five. You're supposed to take them off and put them back on in that order. I don't. I like to start with the GPU simply because I replaced it properly with that. And it allows me to line up better on this with fewer shiftings. Screws back on. The heat sink. Alright. On. Everything's heat synced up. Everything's got thermal paste on it. You can see it oozing around for these chips because they're right on the edge, right where they're at. Not a bad thing that it's oozing around because that allows it to actually heat sink to the side of the heat sink as well as the bottom where it actually contacts. And since they aren't heat excessively heat sensitive, it's not a big deal. And attach the fan. And back in, push the boards down, out of the way, and reattach the back plate. As I said, this one is a lot easier than the Dell, which is why I'm showing you in detail this one instead of the Dell, because it's going to take me another 15 possibly 20 minutes just to reassemble the Dell. And this one, it takes a whopping 15 to 20 minutes. Grand total for everything. Disassembly, cleaning, reapplication, and everything. Slide the battery back in. I like to lock it. And this laptop is ready to go. It's got fresh grease on it. So you can see the a whole other video, long time, and hitting the maximum cap of that in order to get the other one just disassembled to where I could show you. And then cleaned and put the heatsink back on. I couldn't even reassemble it. I 
didn't even finish disassembling it fully and showing you in order to get it put together again. So. Moral of this story, get an easy to disassemble laptop. Something that allows you quick, easy access to everything rather than the RAM, which you will replace once for a single upgrade, and a hard drive, which you will replace once for an upgrade. Everything else, yeah, put those accessible, yeah, that's fine. But the heat sink is where you really need to pay attention to. Lenovo does it, Dell doesn't didn't. I'm not sure about new ones. I haven't gone back to them. Well, that's my second video. That takes a very, very, very long time. Okay. And back up. You can see me sitting and talking at the camera. There you go. That and messy if you got normal paste on there already. Not so messy if you don't. Either way, you want to do it right. You want to do it right the first time. You don't want excess normal paste. If you do, take a clean, dry piece of paper towel and wipe it off. Put on a fresh coat. You don't want to waste. If you get too much on there, it's better to start off from scratch than it is to try and cut it or roll it or do anything else because you'll get dust and dirt and whatnot in there and it will degrade your cooling performance massively. There's a little bit of dust in there and you can go from a 30 degree temperature idle a 70 degree temperature idle. I have seen that twice on my Dell laptop. All it is, a little bit of dust fell into the thermal paste. Degrades the performance that much. Now, because of uh, the split videos, I will either be uploading two videos and you'll be seeing two separate videos, or I will uh, do a little bit of uh, editing, which I really don't want to do because it will take forever, and slam them both together. Whichever way I do it, hope you liked it. Hope you liked the video. I uh, hope no complaints about me using the headset as opposed to just straight up through the microphone built into the camera, which is actually my phone. Zenfone 6. Uh, yes, I purchased one from overseas and had it shipped here just in order to have the Zenfone. The main reason was $280 for the same specs as I was seeing on $600 phones here in the United States. Yeah, I'm going to pay less and wait a couple of weeks for it to get here. Okay, well, that about covers it. Hope you enjoyed it, or at least didn't hate it. Uh, hopefully my next video will not take an hour like this one did. Or longer. Whatever. I'm not sure how long this one took. I will figure it out later. I'm not taking a second take on this one. This is the first take. After lining everything up, that's it. Just once because it takes so long to do, and I don't want to edit. All right, that's that.